What is up y'all, welcome back, and welcome to a fresh trying new makeup video. There's been a lot of stuff that has come out recently while I've been doing my mid-year roundups. Some PR that's just like built up, and some stuff that I've bought. So I went on my Instagram like I usually do for these kinds of videos and asked y'all to just ask me anything. Hopefully we'll get some jumping off points to have some conversations while we apply the makeup today. But I've got the new eyeshadow sticks from Rare Beauty. I've got some eyeshadow that I bought. I've got some Chanel that I bought. I've got some Chanel that was gifted to me by a friend. I have new goodies and old goodies and just lots of goodies, but I have no plan. <laughs> I have no idea how this is going to turn out. So let's go ahead and jump in. Oh, y'all. I have lost so much hair. Curling it is like the one way to make it look like it exists. But I'm telling you, like in the back, like that's, it's just all pulled over my shoulders and I cut my own hair. I always cut my own hair, but I cut my own hair the other night and I used a mirror to look at the back of my head and I'm telling you the perimeter is interrupted for like people who are, you know, have cut hair before, you know, you comb all the hair down and usually there's a line. Mine is like this because like the middle portion, it, the, that's where I lost all of my hair was right there at the nape of my neck. And I mean, it is freaking gone. So I've been like wearing extensions here and there or just, pretending or actually I reached out to Rudy Berry and I was like how do you get that cutie bun like it's so perfect how she does her little bun and she said it was like a Garnier gel and a Bora bristle brush and I marched my little buns over Amazon and I bought them <laughs> that is like the thing that I think we talked about the most at Hannah's baby shower was just like how influencers are not immune to the influence of other influencers and how like we're just caught like everything that we like and everything that we're interested in is it's probably something that was like either recommended to us or that we just saw on one of our, whoa, one of our friends. So anyway, I'm actually starting with the tiger grass cream from Dr. Jart. Cause I don't know if you can tell, I'm actually doing a round of retinol. So I'm like trying to get my skin back used to retinol. My pores are very much like purging right now. So this is a color corrector that's like, I don't know, it's green for sure. And then it kind of turns skin colored, feeling very like Hannah right now, you know, where she kind of green color corrects everything. I don't typically have issues with redness, but my goodness, does that make a difference? And it also helps add to my SPF. I'm wearing the Naturium Chemical Sunscreen underneath everything right now, I think. And then this is a technically a mineral sunscreen. It's like a mineral barrier, but yeah, it's, it's called the Tiger Grass Color Correcting Treatment, neutralizes redness and protects skin, broad spectrum SPF 30. So. She's green and we are just going in. Yeah, it's not just that, it's like also I pick, you know? But I caved in and got back on my antidepressants. I was so brave <laughs> and got off my antidepressants back in April and I just, you know, found myself having a little bit too much of a hard time like dragging myself up and out of bed lately and turns out it wasn't seasonal depression, it's just, chemicals. It's just chemicals. And I was feeling a little bit like discouraged. I was like, oh, well, you know, it's admitting defeat. Like I went ahead and like leaned myself off of this. That looks so much better. Wow. I'm keeping that out. I'm keeping that out. Thank you, Dr. Jart. I was like, I got on these for postpartum. I shouldn't have to be on them anymore because I don't have postpartum anymore, blah, blah, blah. And then my friend Natalie was like, deciding to get back on antidepressants is not admitting defeat. <laughs> like if anything, it is a conscious self-care measure. And I was like, thank you for that perspective. I'm going to refill my prescription now. Things are looking up in that respect. I mean, we're all kind of trying to do the best we can under whatever circumstances, right? So speaking of Miss Natalie, I have always really enjoyed this. This was a Mm, that wasn't the first one. It's the first true foundation formula that I ever tried from Chanel because I think that I had tried their Le Beige with like the little suspension, you know, the very, very low coverage one before, but this is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Foundation Hydration and Long Wear. It might've been the first one that I bought because I bought the wrong shade. And since then I have come to understand that I am a 10 or a B10 in everything from Chanel and it's a fantastic shade match for me. And I have this in a lighter shade and it doesn't work for me. So I was like mixing it with things to bronze it up and stuff. But then I came along to the number one day Chanel, the red Camellia revitalizing and like it eclipsed my love for this one because it was a better shade match and it's a great formula. But when I was in DC this past weekend, there was like a big exchange of products between all the beauty people. You know what I mean? It's like, I've got this thing for you and I've got this thing for you or whatever. And now I've got this full shelf of like unopened skincare, even more than I had before. Thank you, Natalie. But also she had my shade in the 
Healthy Glow foundation from Chanel and I just fell back in love with it so much. Like every, as soon as I put it on, I was like, oh, I remember why I love this so much because it really just looks like, it's, it's higher coverage than the Red Camellia and it just looks like I'm painting better skin on. But I would be remiss not to use this first. So I actually bought this at the Chanel Beauté Atelier in New York City, and this is the LeBlanc Eclat Rosé Sur Mesure, uh, the rosy light drops. And this was just something that like, as I interacted with it in the actual atelier, I was just enamored. It's so beautiful. And I'm not even usually a liquid highlight person, but I was applying it on top of other makeup because I already had makeup on, right? And I was kind of repairing what I had sweated through in getting there and stuff because it was a pretty balmy day. And I just was shocked at like the color correction, how kind this was to my skin and how it kind of brought everything back to life in a way that didn't look glittery. So it's almost like a Becca under eye corrector, you know, to make a reference that most people have a touch point for in their brains, you know? But it's just a good little like reflective thing that might show through the foundation, might help with a little bit of color correction under my eyes and stuff and I don't know I just think about it as like another texture of paint to be working with and it's so beautiful I have used too much of it I have covered my whole face in it and then it's just me pushing the limits but and then mixed it with my foundation you can use too much to the point that like it's gonna make your makeup kind of underperform but this is about as close as I'll get to a highlight do you know what I mean I'm not a big highlight girl this is just so beautiful I also got the stick highlight in Drage, which I didn't realize was like such an iconic product. There it is. Yes, this is just, oh, if I think about it or if I feel confident, I guess, in doing it because it is pretty balmy, I might put this on when we get, you know, done with the complexion look, but this is the most well executed balm highlight I've ever seen. It's so, beautifully flattering on the skin it has very little actual like color pigment to it but what it does have is super flattering and this color drage is not too dark for my skin to actually be a highlight but it's just kind and again i kind of touched it with my finger because it melts when you touch it but it's not anywhere near as like weird and slick and slippy as like the westman atelier lit up sticks and so i'm like touching it on my skin and it basically just it didn't disturb my makeup underneath it but it just made everything look alive and i was like oh my god i had to cart like that is so great this does not have a scent the other two do that we've talked about just now. So the rose drops and this foundation I'm about to put on. Again, B10. B10 is my shade, y'all. It's just so nice to just paint on better skin, especially because, I don't know, I tend not to think that I have a lot of issues getting my skin to match when my, you know, my body might change color or my whatever. In, you know, seasonally, you get sun, right? And it's because I don't really get a tan. And most people are like, oh, how do I adjust my stuff for, you know, getting a tan? And I would tell them either the like deep bronzy drops from Drunk Elephant or the golden primer from Victoria Beckham. Like you're just not gonna be disappointed. They're not gonna, they're, they're only going to improve the performance of your makeup. But all that to say, I don't think about it much because I don't really get a tan but I should think about it more because I do get a lot of pigment. It's just not cute, you know? It's not freckles. <laughs> it's like melasma, and then any place that I've picked on my skin like absorbs the sunlight and just gets really dark, and I get, you know, these very obvious dark spots. My whole point in saying this is it gets harder sometimes in the summer for me to like match my skin properly, especially once I've gotten all my bronzer on and everything. I'll just be like, what? That doesn't look right, you know? My face looks like it doesn't belong to my body and so I have been kind of playing more with the colors that I'm using and trying to just kind of dial back how much I'm pushing the limits on it because I do I just always end up with like too much like bronze or too much pink and I discovered that if I wipe the makeup off to kind of like patch it up I just turn my skin pink and then I end up with pink face anyway that's no fun at all I also haven't had my Botox done since like late February I want to say yeah, I have about, I'm getting it done in about a week. I don't know. It normally wouldn't bother me, but it's just kind of on top of everything else, you know? I'm just looking stressed. Okay, so let's use some concealer. What concealer was I going to use? Oh, I think I want to use my little Tom Ford stick. So yeah, in the interest of things being actually the right color, I'm like skewing a little bit light 
you know, I'm kind of giving myself a little bit more wiggle room. So this is the Traceless Foundation Stick from Tom Ford, and I did buy this with a foundation in mind. I do know what my shade is actually in this. I have it written down in my phone. I can't rattle it off the top of my head, but I'm gonna buy it at the next Sephora sale or the next time, you know, it goes on sale. But uh, this works great as a really great, like, brightening concealer for me. And lately I've been loving a sponge just because I think that I'm like extra conscious of putting less on my face whenever possible because everything kind of like wants to build up and gum up and cake up on me right now. Maybe because of the weather, maybe because of less Botox. I just feel like the quality of my skin right now, she's just not thriving. Sponge really applies like very little at a time. And it also, like there's something about the firmness of this LH Cosmetics sponge that really leaves a nice blurred finish instead of maybe, you know, a stippled finish that you might get from a brush. Okay, so we're looking brightened. I am going to kind of almost artificially brighten my jawline. I just am so terrified right now, like extra, extra conscious of that line. I feel like almost everything looks like it's oxidizing on me because I have so much pigmentation underneath my makeup, you know? All right, let's check a question here because we're gonna do like bronzer and contour and stuff and none of it's new. My Magic Emily asks, where does Simon get his absolutely precious baby angel curls? <sighs> I'll put a picture of his curls. Like I don't put him on the internet like his face, but I am more than happy to, you know, show his beautiful curls. It's actually funny because I always take pictures of his hair when <laughs> It's really thriving like when it's humid outside and his hair is just doing the most But also like the other half of the time I would say and I'm using my Oma contour here the other half of the time I would say it is absolutely like Gene Wilder deranged. It looks hilarious Like we've never cut his hair and we have no intention of cutting it Although it is starting to get like if you think about it the hair that's kind of like at his crown that like he's you know When he sleeps it kind of that's the part that rubs the very ends of that hair probably probably last like two inches or so, are like almost as old as he is. Like, okay, he was bald for a very, very long time, but like almost as old as he is. Probably if he's almost three, they're like two and a half years old. He's never used a conditioner or a detangler or a cream rinse as we called it when I was a kid. It's just kind of gnarly snarly. And I, I do kind of want to just trim that spot, you know, as being hairdresser mom, you know what I mean? I'm just like, well, it could be a little bit healthier, blah, 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 but like, I don't really care. But to answer your question, I am the one where he got the blonde from, although my brother-in-law was also blonde. My husband is half Italian. And so his mom is like full Italian, but she's like Northern Italian. So she's like blonde hair, blue eyes. And so his brother got that. Mike got the like tans when he thinks about the sun thing. And Mike also has really curly hair. So it's like his brother has curly blonde hair. I had his, my, but Simon got my color of hair. Like that's the exact color of my hair when I was a child. And he got like my hairline. So like I, truly the way that it's all growing in and everything looks exactly like my hair when I was a kid. And my hair was like wavy and it still is, but it is about twice as curly. You know what I mean? The circumference is about half of what mine was. And so it's kind of a combination of everybody. I feel like it's getting lighter outside. And so I want to like turn that down. Is that better? I think that's better. Okay. Yeah. So that and just the fact that like he's, I think the only kid in his class who's never had a haircut. So we're just letting it vibe. It's so awesome. Earlier on before it all kind of grew in the way that it is right now, where it's just an absolute tumbleweed of nonsense. He had this like natural like punk rock scene kid haircut where it was like a mullet and a little bit over his ears, pretty short around here. And then just this like little bit of like a, a mohawk that went into like little short, like, you know, pert looking bangs on his on his forehead. I look back at those pictures and I'm like, it looks like I gave you that haircut. Like he looks so cool. <laughs> the kid was born cool. What can I say? He truly is so cool. He just like walks around in sunglasses all the time. And he's like, look at me, look at me. He only roots for the main characters in all the movies. <laughs> You know, like there's those kids that root for the underdog and then there's the kids that are like, I'm Maui, you know, I'm Sully. I'm like, okay, so like you're the main, it's fine. Like he just thinks of himself as the main character and that's fine. I'm glad that we have instilled true honesty and confidence in this child. A little too confident. He's just learned how to somersault and oh my God, it's just like constantly, like my, most of my job as a mother is like physically spotting him for all of his like physical 
tests. He's constantly testing the boundaries of his own like physical capabilities and it's always head first and why is it always head first? It's like boys, it's like keeping them from getting a concussion and just feeding them and he only wants dairy all the time. It's just like cheese and yogurt, cheese and yogurt all the time. When he was very little I used to do this thing where I would kind of tip him backwards. Now I can't I can, but like, I, I don't know if I would have started this knowing this, but I used to like turn him upside down and for whatever reason I would call him Batman. And not because Batman, because Sp Spider-Man's the one who's, you know, usually upside down, but like Batman, for whatever reason I was, I was thinking of a bat, you know, like upside, bat sleep upside down. And I was like, are you Batman? Are you Batman? And then I'd like turn him down and I'd pick him up and I'd kiss his neck, you know? I go, I don't know, you know? And he's almost three years old and he will now hang off of the couch off of my knees and he'll go, I'm Batman! <laughs> And then I have to pick him up and kiss him. I mean, I ha you know what I mean? I have to. But yeah, it's definitely a lot more physically demanding than it used to be to play Batman with Simon. Wow, I really digressed, don't I? Okay, let's do some blush. I have some new stuff from Salt New York here. I haven't opened it up yet. She texted me and um, I asked her specifically to send me another. Uh, she was like, is there anything I can supply you with? And I was like, I really need another actual like case because people are threatening to take up a GoFundMe to house the unhoused loose pans that are just like living in my storage right now. So fret not my loves. I now have a new one. Okay, so she re-upped me on some sneaky bombs and my favorite cream contour. And we have the new shades. I'm assuming right here, she's had tissue paper made, y'all. Look at how cute this is. Keeks. The thing about Kiki is, as a Virgo, she is only limited by logistics. She has more ideas than can like fit in this universe. And so it's just a matter of like being able to get them out in any kind of like practical fashion. So it's just always exciting to see like the little details because Virgos are just notoriously attentive to detail. So this is what I have to admit. I mean, yes, toasted coconut is very exciting, but you always have me at a sparkling peach. Look at that. Look at it. Oh, it's almost a highlighter. It looks a lot like the House Labs highlighter that kind of is a blush-ish, you know? And then we have Dosted Coconut. Ooh, also unbelievably beautiful. So it's very, very warm looking and then it's got the gold shimmer to it. All right, let's freaking go. The millennial urge to say, let's freaking go before anything you do. Come on. Yeah. Yep. So the thing about the Salt New York pigments is, pigments, uh, what are they called? The, the Cream Tint Pro. They don't really like have a super like hybrid powder dry down or anything, but she's gotten enough pigment in them that you really don't have to put very much down. I think I've got enough brown going on on my face right now. So we're gonna stick with the peach and we'll go with the, you know, the shimmery kind of everywhere. And then I might top it off with something a little bit more opaque, you know, from my stash, from my collection, but I do. I I am really interested to see how this one goes. I have a code. <laughs> She's a professional. I have a code. I love that I just like get struck by some kind of idea. I have a code. I think it's khaki 10. Cute Kiki. Yes. Everything about these is, you know, always giving like healthy skin. Beautiful. I love that. And it's a great jumping off point for what we're doing today because it, I, I feel like it's gonna get pretty copper, pretty coral, pretty quick, you know? But I am gonna powder. I kind of broke up with powder in my private life because I just get so frustrated like looking at myself in the mirror later and being like, what, like what, when did I age like you know, 10 years. Like, what the heck? You know, it's just like not fair. It's not about age, it's about being different looking than what you're used to looking at, you know? It's like that filter on TikTok. It's not about the fact that I look old, it's the fact that if you put your face in there, no matter what, you would look 30 years older than you are now kind of thing, and it's just like, you know, a mind warp. But anyway, I decided, because this is what I always do, right? Is like, you know, I get far flung in all of my things that I'm trying, and I get like really ambitious or adventurous or whatever, and then I I have to come back to center and say, okay, what works, right? If like, I can't remember how to find 
sure again. Like what is a fan favorite, a crowd pleaser that I know I can go back to? And actually this is not something that was ever one of my favorite things. I never knew, you know, because I had never tried it. I recently got on the Laura Mercier mailing list and they did send me, this is around holiday, a huge, I mean, I guess the full size, but like a, you know, a very big container of their very, very famous translucent powder, right? This stuff is great, okay? <laughs> it's just great. And I became an instant fan. So I do go ahead and smooth her out and then just do the lightest little pat, pat, pat. And it doesn't take away too much of the like emollients, but it does help set it so that it doesn't get all crepey under there. Oh, so much better. I mean, we are not, we're not baking with this anymore. I think there was a time when people were baking with this, but powder is still powder and they are definitely not all created equal. And I having like the driest skin in the world, it really has to be a powder that like is nice to me. <laughs> Please be nice. Sparkling peach is looking v cute. And I will I will give all of my earth signs and Libras the satisfaction of knowing that these are going in a fresh new home, okay? There you go. <laughs> you can sleep tonight. All right, so Rare Beauty sent over a bunch of really cool stuff and so did Laura Mercier. So I have brow products, cream eyeshadow sticks that are shimmery from Rare Beauty, and I have matte ones that have been reformulated and some new shades added from Laura Mercier. So we're gonna make use of all of those things. So I'm gonna start with the Laura Mercier. These are the caviar sticks that are matte and they sent me quite a few of them, but these are my two favorites just straight out of the gate. This is Brick and Au Naturel. Brick is this like amazing burgundy and it's going to allow me to then lean into the burgundy eyeliner that I want to use from Rare Beauty today that was like an instant love. And then Au Naturel is like it's such a cool, almost like lavender leaning beige. And that's what I'm going to kind of use as the rest of the base. Yeah, let's do that first. And then we'll talk about the Rare Beauty ones because I have a lot of thoughts on them. Okay, so I scrolled down to the bottom and that means it's like, you know, the first submissions. And Natalie says, I'm going to be sad if you don't talk about how insane my chart is, which give me a reason to talk about astrology, right? So my friend Natalie, my skin trist, we decided to do her chart, right? And I guess just she had already done it, but like didn't have it committed to memory, you know, like some of us wild and crazy girls do. And she starts reading it off kind of no context. And she's like, well, my sun is in Gemini. My moon is in Leo. My rising is in Leo. My Venus is in Gemini. My Mercury is in Gemini. My Saturn is in Gemini. My Jupiter is in Gemini. And I was like, give me the phone. Every planet, y'all. I think probably she might have the Neptune in uh, Capricorn that most of us do in this generation. But like, other than that, and her and her two Leo placements, the entirety of her chart is Gemini. I mean, me and Steph just like couldn't stop laughing. It was so funny. She's like, what? I was like, this is not normal. <laughs> like you look at her chart and it's like all of her planets just decided to run over into Gemini. It's so funny. And she's like the most Gemini Gemini in the world anyway. And also the Leo placements make sense too. Yeah, at first she was like, wait, like, are you making fun of me? And I'm like, no, I just need you to know how like rare this is. Like it's so freaking interesting. I'm looking for a brush before this. I'm gonna use the little rare beauty brush here. Yeah, so anybody with that much Gemini in their chart, basically it's like everything that you're pursuing in life, all of your pursuits have the same like air of curiosity and a necessity for detail. And it's for things to be like extraordinarily clear and fleshed out, but also they're like receipt havers. And so I just, it just describes her so much to a T. I was just so, just so accurate. And then of course the rest being Leo, like rising and moon being Leo. It's honestly, it's just perfect. It was so perfect. I was like, astrology is real. <laughs> so I hope that that's satisfying to you, Natalie. Like, I hope that, I hope that like, you see it as all love because that's why I love astrology is because I love kind of finding out these things about people because it kind of always makes sense. So there's a little tiny bit of brick with Au Naturel and I love the way that they mix together. I'm gonna go with a little bit more brick because I do feel like they mixed together more maybe than I wanted them to. But I think that what's kind of left behind by the combination is something that's sort of softly pink, which is very pretty. I think it's pretty. The, the questions are great today, y'all. These are really good. As an artist, do you have favorite brands of art supplies? 
I would say that I do, and the reason that my art is pretty expensive is just because I do go for like the highest end stuff that they usually have. I order from Blick because it's, you know, the biggest store online. I like their canvases. I am not skilled enough, nor do I have the space to stretch my own canvases currently. I've never actually been taught how to do it. It is definitely something I want to learn how to do, but I currently buy gallery wrap canvases that I work on and they're, you know, really, really high quality. And like, I trust them far more than I trust one that I would stretch myself kind of thing. But I think that the main thing that matters is, well, actually there are two. So one, Stuart Semple makes like the most white, white and the most black, black. And I do really enjoy those. They're a little soupier than I would want, but like it's come to the point where now, instead of buying individual colors of paint, I buy India ink and then I mix it with the Stuart Semple white because it's just such a powerful white that like it can be a base for just about anything, which is really nice. And then the other thing is, and I I actually messaged Celia Lees to ask her this because she's the one who taught the class on Artify that got me launched off into doing abstract. I asked her, I was like, why aren't my oil sticks like giving? Like yours are giving because like she could just take an oil stick and like draw like a bright white line. And I was like, why aren't mine showing up? Cause it really matters. RNF oil sticks. It's a specific brand RNF and they are very expensive. <laughs> they're so expensive, but they're so worth it. Like that's really what I use them most. It's so much better than having like a palette full of oil paint because I used to do that, you know? And I also used to work predominantly only in acrylic and like the Stuart Semple is acrylic because I like to have stuff that dries quickly sometimes, but you just don't get the depth that you get from oil when you're working with acrylic. And so that's why a lot of my stuff is oil. I never thought I would be someone who worked in oil, never, because oil is just, it takes so long to dry. It's so It takes so long to dry. People will buy a painting and it'll take like a month before I can ship it because it's like, I just keep checking on it and it's still still wet. So much media on the canvas. Oh, I just adore the way that that looks. Okay, so let's talk about the Rare Beauty Shadow Sticks. I alluded to this in my last video. Yes, I was talking about the Nordstrom sale because they had some shadow sticks on sale that are like shimmery, like the caviar sticks or the Bobby Brown ones or whatever. And that's great, but I realized after using these, I was like, this is why I haven't really stayed into eyeshadow sticks in the past is because I typically am using ones that are shimmery. And I have to tell you, I think that my love kind of only extends to matte. I know that that looks pretty, but it's because it's on top of my hand. Whereas on my eye, it's gonna mix with my complexion products and stuff. And I swear it's just gonna lose its luster. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt, but I tried it yesterday and I was just pretty disappointed. And it's not because the Rare Beauty ones are a bad version of this. It's just that I feel like this delivery system is always going to be so silicone-y that like you're not gonna get the unctuous satisfaction out of a glitter that you would that's just in like a single pot or something or a liquid it just there's something about the nature of it being in this delivery system that's always going to kind of dull down the luster and it's just not what I'm looking for but we're going to do it anyway that's pretty okay yeah if nothing else it'll serve as a base for something else, you know, but it's fine. You know what I mean? It's fine. And like I said, it's not a knock on Rare Beauty making this. It's just that I think I've realized that like, this is not my ideal. Like I'm, I'm just not necessarily a shimmery eyeshadow stick person because I just don't think that like, they're ever going to give me what I want. It's pretty. Like it's pretty. It is pretty. That is pretty. I will give them that. That's pretty. Mm -hmm. But I'm still gonna put some glitter on it. It's just about what you're looking for, you know? Cause it was the same thing when I did the hourglass ones. I like I had that hourglass that I kept calling the shade, the actual name of the product. That is one thing hourglass does is they love to just put the name of the product in the largest font. And then like, you can't find the actual shade name to save your life. And you're just like, oh, it's the voyeur. You know, it's not, it was called like, I don't know, sun something. I don't remember, but yeah. So that's not the worst, right? And do they have one that is like an inner corner? Hey, let's find out. Oh, my child has been watching Monsters Inc. And my brain is like, do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. 
Okay, so this is, that by the way, that shade was called <laughs> uh, Contentment, and this one is called Integrity, and I don't think that that's light enough. That's gonna give me an inner corner low light, and that's something that I, what, hate. I hate that when it's not light enough. I think that that's our only option, therefore, I'm going to not do that. <laughs> what I do want to do is grab where are you my love where are you my love blaze blaze so uh whenever i go to sephora with steph and natalie that's when like i find just the best things i don't know why we just happen to kind of like i'm like oh my god this is amazing it's in stock what the heck and i had never tried the shade blaze in the scattered light and it's just so cute when you're with your friends and they're like, that one looks so good on you, you know what I mean? And then you just get excited about it together. Like this just, it's just fun. So this one is a lot more like copper, whereas Ray is like that really nice, like neutral, almost rosy brown. And it does still have the beautiful, you know, scattered light effect. So that's what I'm gonna put on top. Cause I like it. Don't do that. Do -do 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 -do. Oh yeah, see, look at the difference. Now, and was I expecting the Rare Beauty to be uh, Hourglass Scattered Light? No, but if that's what I'm looking for, you know, I'm just not gonna get what I'm looking for. Again, it's like a preference thing. Uh, it's my fault for coming in with expectations, right? Oh, but like, you gotta admit, like that's just gonna give you the most sultry, like, come on, come on. And like the Scattered Light has been around forever, forever. I'm just now like, you know, trying a different shade. Especially cause like, I don't know. It's like as much as I want to believe the hype a lot of times because I have been served my own buns on a platter by the fact that I have like a chip on my shoulder a lot of times about that kind of stuff where I'm just like, oh, if everybody loves it, I'm not gonna be mainstream. <laughs> I'm gonna be a scene kid and I'm gonna not buy that thing that everybody likes kind of thing. And I usually get my butt handed to me, but it'll be like the singular example of the Charlotte Tilbury eyes to mesmerize where I'm like, aha, I was right. It's terrible. You know what I mean? And like, cause I am like team, I don't like that formula at all. It's like me and Kelly Gooch just against the world. Yeah. And it's like, I take those as my little badges of honor where I'm just like, well, I was right about that one, you know, which is stupid, but this is just good. That's all, that was my only point. So we also have a new eyeliner here from Rare Beauty. This is the brown one. This is not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. So there's a brown, there's a black, and then there is this one called Compassion that is burgundy and I love her. That's what I'm gonna do, especially with like a copper eye. It's just like so tonal and smoky and gorgy porgy. Wooden pie, kiss the boys and made them cry. And am I the kind of person who is typically here for a pencil or a retractable or whatever? Like not necessarily, you know? Ooh, you know what I did do? <laughs> ah, the perks of cleaning things. I actually, cause okay, if y'all have ever had brush bath from It Cosmetics, it's It Brushes for Ulta. They, they do this stuff that's amazing. Like you just spray it like on a towel, right? And it's like what, you know, they use it like the mat counter probably. And it'll just, be this nice way to clean your brush off like that, you know, quickly get the product off of there. But for whatever reason, it smells so good. For whatever reason, the little tube inside there always falls out and I don't know why. Like it's in there so securely when I do it and then it falls out and then like, I just have to go get tweezers and like pull it back out and I always forget to do it. So I finally did it. I put it back in there and so I can use my brush bath again. It's amazing what gets neglected when you're wildly depressed. Yesterday, actually, so Mars, my ruling planet just moved into Virgo. It was like hilarious because I was like Monday, I did a bunch of work and then I got real sad and then I decided I was going to get back on my antidepressants and as soon as I made that decision and went and refilled my prescription, a wave of productivity came over me and I was like, everything's gonna be okay, Khaki, we're all gonna make it. And <laughs> I cleaned everything. I cleaned this room, I cleaned out my car, I cleaned out my cabinets, I cleaned everything. I was like, wow, you'd think that my ruling planet just went into Virgo and it, it had. I had just gotten like, an, I just like at that moment looked and saw an email from the Chani app being like, Mars is in Virgo. And I was like, you don't say as I'm like on my hands and knees cleaning. Look, looky, look, look. Oh, I just love her. It does make me want a burgundy mascara. I also like that I can be a little bit sloppy because it's like not black, you know what I mean? It's not like so high contrast that it's like, what have I done? Isn't that just lovely? So pretty and it's waterproof. I'm not gonna say it's like the easiest formula to work with. It does like have a lot of commitment, you know? It's like kind of like 
but it's because it's waterproof, I guess. Okay, well, you know, the brow products that I do have are from Rare Beauty, so we can just keep on keeping on here. They sent me Cool Brown. Hopefully it's good, I haven't tried this one yet. But if y'all recall, actually there's been, th this is the third, I think, like brow pigment product that they've put out. The first one was kind of a chunkier pencil. I was not a fan. This one is more precise. And then they also put out this really cool, it was like, I think the first PR they ever sent me was the little boxes. They were like these little tiny, thin, narrow compacts of like brow powder. They were pretty cool too. So it's definitely brown, obviously, you know, but all of the Victoria Beckham Baby Blade brow liners pulled so dark for what they were called. You know, like light brown is like, people were like, is that deep brown? I'm like, this is light brown, man. I'm just glad this is, this is definitely at least my brow color. It's not too soft, like, you know what I mean? Waxy or melty and it's metal. It's kind of cold to the touch. Oh, and this is also something I, yes. I always make sure of. Don't make me fail an intelligence test first thing in the morning. Make the lids the same size. Because if I happen to try to put the little one from the spoolie on the big part up here, I'm gonna smash my pencil sometimes if I haven't rolled it back down all the way. And like some of them do it and some of them don't. And I honestly, it's like one of my biggest pet peeves is when they don't make the lids the same size. Don't make me take an intelligence test before I've had my coffee. I don't wanna have to think that hard. Well, that is just really nice. I think I'm just gonna keep this one out. That's a really, really nice brow pencil. Good color. The formula, I don't feel like I'm like fighting it, you know? It spreads out nicely. Yeah, and it just didn't get carried away. Isn't that lovely? Kind of funny, you can't like put your finger on it sometimes, why like a brow pencil is better than another brow pencil, but there's just something like that feels really clean about that. There are things that I can't fit on my face today. Like one of them, I was gonna try and use this today. This is the Matte Fluid Eye Paint from About Face because they just came out with new ones. Like they just came out with new shades and they came out with brushes. That's what I was trying to say. But I am going to do a little clean up here just to make sure everything looks really nice and blended. I'm using a Laura Mercier powder for this. But yeah, that's just gonna have to be another another whole day. Cause like we went to Hannah's baby shower and Steph had, yeah, like we had both used Blaze from Hourglass, the scattered light that I have on right now. But at the end of the day, like mine was gone and hers was still there. And I was like, what did you, what did you base with? And she was like, the about face. That was what she had used. And it just made it so that like it lasted all day. And I mean, we were outside, we were in it, you know? Okay, so she also, I keep saying she, like it's Selena Gomez sitting there being like, and for khaki I've chosen, but like, yeah, she sent a clear brow gel. Maybe we'll just use clear brow gel today. Oh, actually I have my milk one. I'll just do that. I like this one. This is in the shade Herb. I just like a power brow. Nothing wild, but I do like my brows to be one of the stars of the show, you know? And Rare Beauty did send over their mascara as well. Let's give her a go. I left my Surratt eyelash curler in my bathroom. So I'm gonna use the LH Cosmetics one here. It is not as good. It is just not as good, <laughs> but we're gonna do it anyway. And we need to add some blush in a very, very real way. Everybody loves this mascara. It's still like a regular wash off mascara, which means I am technically risking my life right now. Not really, I just am too much of a toddler to like properly wash mascara out of my eyes if it's not a tubing mascara. <laughs> so like I ended up with this big nasty knot in my eye, probably from using too old of mascara also, but I got a voicemail, oh y'all, even though I didn't end up putting it on my eyes, I had a tube of the Make Beauty mascara that I was going to use in my Make Beauty video that I did, kind of because since they were doing the sale. And I didn't end up putting it on, okay? But I thought about it. I was like, oh, whatever. It's just, you know, like, take one for the team. And Tom had even watched all the way through to the point where they knew I had not actually applied the mascara and I still got this voice memo from them being like, don't you dare. Don't you dare put that on your eyes. And I was like, I appreciate that you care about me enough to chastise me. They're like, I know you didn't do it, but you were thinking about it. That's friendship. Oh, I'm loving my eye look right now. I am loving it. Okay, so this is the clear brow gel from Rare. And I like it, but it's like, I did pile it up a little too much and I noticed a little bit of it just looking a little gluey. How many times did I just say the word little? So just be mindful of that. I think they'll all do that, but. It's a really nice one for defining. Pretty, pretty. I need to pick a blush. All right, I'm going to lean on the Tom of it all here because Tom is like, 
If you like channels where people keep using the same products over and over again, I am not that channel, but I'm gonna lean on that today because I never wanna stop using the Armani blushes, okay? Do a little beige, a little bit of beige here. Boop, 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 boop. This is 10. Cool, cool, cool. Ooh, I'll use a little bit of that in my eye look too because it'll kind of help even out some of what's poking through. You know, you can see some of like the veins and stuff. And this is just like the perfect beige to add a little bit of opacity and make that less distracting. You see, see the difference? Okay, okay, loving. And then we have shade 30, which is, you know, it's coral. Is that what I wanna do? Are we coral today? I don't think we are. We're like bronzy. Like it's just this kind of like rich rosy bronze color. What is that color? It's this color. I'm gonna try and match this in a blush. Yes, okay. I think that this might be the answer. And if it's not, it might be this. I think it's a, a lot of this and a little bit of this. So these are the RMS Redimension Hydro Powder Blushes. This is Maiden's Blush and this is Hanky Panky. So we're gonna go with Maiden's Blush first here. Putting this on a BK 104, kind of the smaller blush brush. These are fairly pigmented. So I wanna be kind of careful here. They're so gorgeous though. Ooh, they're so pretty. I might not need the other one. That's kind of the ticket. It's just such like a vague color, right? Did you all see the, the Patrick Ta, the new blush ad they put out? It's like, they put so much blush on this white girl's cheek that she looks like she has radiation exposure. It's bad. It looks so bad. And I got a message from someone being like, that is a very useful color for someone, just not that girl. And it's like, exactly, exactly. Okay, we're gonna do a tiny bit of hanky panky here. Yeah, that's the mood. So what did I do when I went to Sephora with Natalie and Steph? We got to talking to the YSL rep that was there. And we were just talking about how much we love the candy glaze. Oh my word. So I ended up buying another one because I like them so much. This is the shade 15. And I don't remember the actual name of the color, but it's like something nude, right? Like nude something, I don't remember. Look at it. It's perfect for this look and I'm so excited. So let's put it on. So if you're unfamiliar with this formula, it's just, it's so good. And I fell in love with the, uh, I fell in love with the clear version. I wear it all the time. And so I was like, all right, I want a color. It's like truly a super nourishing lip gloss, but in a lipstick container like this and, oh, the formula is gorgeous. The colors are gorgeous. And again, it's like, I've done a whole look in a color I can't put my finger on, right? It's like, what color is that? It's kind of like bronze pink copper and I'm super into it. Cute. Someone once in my comments called that the cat that ate the canary look that I get on my face when I realize I've like, I've done something. You know what I mean? Like I've really, I've really nailed it. Like I said, I went into this with no plan. Y'all just kind of watched the thought process in real time. We might need a little bit more powder just because I'm looking a little bit shiny, but I'd rather that be the case than the other way around. But like the theme today, the theme is like healthy, healthy, healthy. I am trying to just gloss everything up, sparkle everything up, make everything look like, you know, I'm thriving more than I actually am, so. Oh, she's so cute. She's so cute. Okay, so let's do a quick little smash or pass on everything that we tried today, starting with this. The Sika Pear, Tiger Grass. Wow, gonna keep using that. Didn't complain under my makeup, did a really great job color correcting, and I think that it put us off on the right foot in terms of me not ending up with pink face, because we very much could have, and I think... I think that that's actually a pretty good complexion match for me that we ended up with. It's been touch and go lately. I really, really enjoy this. I already loved this foundation, but having the right shade in it, thank you, Natalie, is just so awesome. And like, this is just, it's so gorgeous. Especially oddly as like a underpainting kind of color corrector, it helps with reflecting light in a way that I feel like is just really useful for ending up with actually ultimately less product on my face and feeling a lot more confident in the way that like my under eyes look, for example. Like I didn't actually, I didn't use my 
Victoria Beckham bronzer underneath my eyes this time like I have been because I feel like it didn't end up as contrasty as a result. So fantastic there. I understand that there are caveats here. This was used, this, the use case for this Tom Ford product for me right now as a concealer is just because I have the wrong shade, but I do really like it. It's taken me a long time to like it because I think when I first bought it, I want to say I was in Texas and it just didn't work in Texas, but it really works in New Jersey where it is just dry all the time here. And I don't mean like California dry, but like a lot drier than Texas. So it doesn't matter that the set down isn't like, you know, wildly aggressive for me. I would rather have the hydration. And so I will be buying this in my correct shade come like Sephora sale time because it's wildly expensive, but I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Oh, I didn't get to use this. Should we do it? Drage? Let's do a little bit of drage here. I'm just gonna put it on my finger. It's absolutely beautiful. It has just like the tiniest amount of like, almost like a duochrome to it, the way it shifts in the light. And you can put it like right underneath your eye and it's just this like, mm, 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 I love it. I've put it on my lips. It doesn't taste like anything. It doesn't smell like anything. It's just a really beautiful, like dewy finish. It's so gorgeous. Big fan of this, huge fan. Very, very glad that I got that. Very uncommon that I got that. That is not a product that I would typically, like I would never have looked at that on the internet and bought it. I had to touch it to be like, wait, I eschew all of the other versions of this kind of formula typically. And it's because this is the best version to the point that it's actually functional for me, better than functional for me, like actually really great. Uh, best version of that kind of product that I've ever used, you know, where I'm just like, oh, th this is what it's supposed to do. It's not just supposed to be this weird gloss that's only editorial and just moves around and disturbs my makeup kind of thing. So while I'm doing this, I am going to powder just a little bit. My face is feeling a little sticky. Next, the Laura Mercier powder. There's a reason that this is a fan favorite. I didn't know if it was for me necessarily because I had always seen people baking with it and also because I have seen a lot of different skin types use it, but I can confirm that even someone with the driest of skin applied modestly. I didn't obviously go in with like a baking sponge or something, but like this works really, really beautifully and there's a reason it's a fan favorite and it's staying out. The Laura Mercier sticks, I really dig them. It was like I could check out, you know, go into a flow state while I was talking to y'all about like answering questions and they didn't complain like I didn't have anywhere where I had to stop to think about what I was doing I just kind of kept like building them and stuff you know caviar sticks are one of the original versions of this formula and a lot of times when there's a reformulation we can all get a little bit scared you know but this is a very very excellent version of it and I want to say it's probably you know in the same price range as something like the the make one or whatever they're not wildly expensive but they're also not like wildly inexpensive but them being kind of a benchmark for the industry I'm really glad to see that like the reformulation quote unquote and like the new shades and everything are really impressive. I just really like them. And I think that these colors brick, I don't have anything in this like rich, almost rosy burgundy kind of color. And that was, I feel like, set us on a good course. Talking about the Rare Beauty ones and actually the whole Rare Beauty offering here. Like I said, this is not a bad version of what this is. This just, I'm realizing isn't my preference. But I do think that when you got to see it on my eyes before I put the Hourglass Scattered Light on, I think there are plenty of people who would look at that and go, I, that's how I want my eyes to look, you know? And the colors in this line are unbelievably beautiful. They are all in these kind of like soft, skin native, bronzy, pearly, coppery, pinky sort of peachy tones, golds and things like that. Pretty much anybody can find something they would wanna wear, but just be mindful, you know, as I'm getting so effusive and excited about shadow sticks lately, that there's a big difference between like a shimmering shadow stick, like there's just limitations of a shimmering shadow stick that like there's a big difference between that and like, you know, uh, anything that you're gonna get as a single in a pot. And I guess I'm just kind of talking to my past self because that's kind of obvious, but like still, I I didn't know that. Real glad I got Blaze. Can't wait to try the way that Steph was wearing it with a an about face matte liquid eye paint or whatever. I cannot wait to try those two things together. So that will be in another another look at some point. But yeah, it's like when you get excited to try things, like that's how you know. It's just, I know I can rely on these formulas. It you know, always makes me excited to invest in another color. And this being just this gorgeous copper shade. <laughs> Yeah, not mad at that at all. I think that's a worthy investment. I'm probably going to work through it the same way that I've worked through Ray. Kiki's blushes are just absolutely gorgeous. I do think that they are pretty sheer. I think what we're talking about here is actually a highlight. Would you call it a highlight? It's just a cream tint pro. So, you know, it could be a, a blush 
or it could be a highlight. It's a little dark for me to have as a highlight, so I think that it, you know, worked really well as kind of a sheer blush. And it's just, they're absolutely beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, she just does a great job. Her stuff is really consistent. That it's almost like this constant collaboration, right? Between her brilliant brain and all of her ideas and, like, what people are wanting from the line. So, like, very, very cool there. I think it really went well with the look today, too. The Rare Beauty Mascara is really pretty. I mean, again, like, I'm never gonna be a particularly good judge of a non-tubing formula. I think it's pretty, you know. That's all I got on that. The brow products? I'm really impressed. I'm really glad that she kind of reprised her initial idea of that sort of larger crayon shape like this is supposed to be it says it's called the Brow Harmony Precision Pencil. I like this a lot. I think Cool Brown is a fantastic shade for my complexion, for my brow color, and I'm very pleased with it. I also like the clear. It doesn't, I wouldn't say it's got like an epic amount of hold. I don't need an epic amount of hold, but if you're like Hannah and you've got really feisty brows that just want to resist, I don't think this is the one, but it is pretty, you know, and it has a nice kind of definition too, and it doesn't get all crispy crusty. That eyeliner, I think that I'm really just here for the shade. Like I do think that like this is a good formula and it's comparable to like the cool fee or, oh gosh, I don't know. I've tried a lot of them. It is not a slick cajole the way that like the Victoria Beckham ones are, or even the Laura Mercier ones are. It is much more of that kind of grabby waterproof pencil that you're used to But I find that that means that it really commits when you're putting it down It's pretty easy to control in that sense because it's not quick Like it doesn't happen really fast and get all over the place. It's not sloppy And I just I, I you know this being my introduction to a burgundy eyeliner I'm a big fan. I'm just a big fan of how it looks something I was gonna use today is actually this I bought this at the, the Chanel Atelier, but I ordered it because they didn't have it in stock. This is the Rouge Coco Gloss in 166. It's called Physical. Y'all, I put this on when I got it and I was like, what? It didn't look at all like I remembered it in the store. Like it's actually like fluorescent hot pink. It is not like a pretty coral on me. So I'm gonna see if I can make that one work, but I avoided it today. But we did have this. The YSL, this is again in 15. <laughs> Let me look at it. It's like this really adaptive color. I feel like if I was wearing a mauve face of makeup, it would have worked with that, but also the coppery brown, it kind of pulls from that too. It's just this sort of like in between nudie color. It's just very, very good. I think it'll look a little different on everybody. And then my Armani blushes, I mean, come on. I love them. So yeah, that's the vibe today, y'all. It's been a while since I've done a like, chill get ready with me like this. And I love doing them because they're nice and long. I think that that's one of the reasons that everybody really comes back is that geez, they're just long. You know, it's like listening to a podcast. But I hope y'all enjoyed this. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're feeling really cool today because cool people subscribe. I hope you do. And I will put a video up here that I think you're going to enjoy if you liked this one. I love y'all so much. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.